All right. right. Yeah. So haste. Haste. Yeah. There's no chance I could ever play an unhasted DK ever again. I absolutely hate the dropping a healer argument because uh, it's it's the wrong expansion for that. There's no there's no there's no way that even if you have a thousand percent mastery that you would ever drop a healer because of the tank damage. So the other day I went on to subtle stream to talk about all things Death Knight for a conversation that lasted almost four hours. And if you're interested in watching the whole thing, it's available on Subtle's YouTube channel. But I decided to stitch together some of the most important things that we talked about for those with a little bit less time, and here it is. You enjoy. But there's still, there still are very important information in the logs to look at when we when we try to break down the haste versus mastery. Um, conversation and, and what's what's best. Um, so what have you found in the locks that convince you that the, the haste build is superior? Yeah, so I mean, it's something we've talked about before is just kind of these value trades, right? So with mastery as a stat, all it does is increase your healing. Uh, haste yeah. as a stat increases your healing, increases your damage. Mm -hmm. So for mastery to be desirable, it needs to be way better at what it does um, than, you know, the, the same effect you get from haste. Like, mm -hmm. if haste healing and mastery healing are similar, why would you ever go mastery? Like, mm -hmm. you, you just get, you know, a lot of free damage going haste. So, yeah. it, to me, it's just, like, the classic value trade. It's like, mastery, maybe you get a little bit more healing, but... Is not consequential healing, which I, I do have another thing I want to go into with that too. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned this a little bit in your uh, white tank damage matters video, which I loved. Mm -hmm. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, and in that video, you showed like the healing breakdown for like a blood DK. So mm -hmm. this is for heroic Nefarian, you know, hardest probably hitting boss this phase. Uh, so you see. As a blood DK, I did 56.5% of the healing I received. Yep. Uh, the rest of my healing, I mean, it's pretty small percents, but we got like Beacon of Light. This is just, you know, passive healing. It's going to happen regardless yep. of whatever I do. I've got hots rolling on me. This is just happening. They're going to they're gonna be there. They're, they're, they're going to be there. <laughs> um, I'm getting some Atomate healing. This, there is an argument that like yeah, I could you know get uh, heal myself more so that the atomic healing goes to other people more, but opportunity cost. This is uh, yeah. you know the, it's a very small percent of uh, you know the healing I'm receiving, yeah. and then uh, we have like Earth Shield Riptide. Yeah. Uh, th there's very few like direct cast heals uh, being cast on bloody Kays ever which is something I don't think a lot of people realize. Like the typical blood DK healing breakdown is like you do 50 to, 50 to 60% of your own healing. And then you get beacon heals, you get some hot, you get some atonement healing. And then occasionally you get a direct heal here and there. When I see people like talk about blood decay like healing received it seems like they haven't really looked at this because like mm -hmm. they're, they're talking about like oh like man if you add you know 10 percent more mastery you could drop a healer and i'm like right have, no. have, have yeah. you looked at like our healing breakdown here like there's almost never like direct heals cast on us like how are we dropping a healer here i absolutely hate the dropping a healer argument uh because it's it's the wrong expansion for that there's no there's no there's no way that even if you have a thousand percent mastery that you would ever drop a healer because of the tank damage. Yeah. Like, I mean, blood DK is just so self-sustaining is actually insane. Like when I point this out to people, like people, their minds is like explode. Like, like they, they're like, holy shit. How, how are blood DK is not getting nerfed? Like they do 50 to 60% well, <laughs> of their own healing. Um, yeah, that's another, another conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, part of this, uh, bringing it back to, like, the Mastery Hay stuff, yeah. is that, look at this overhealing. So, th keep in mind, this is all healing that's happening regardless. This, this is just happening. 
Like there's no like, oh, if he has a temper temper some more mastery, we don't need to use that heal on him. Well, Th this is all this is all healing that's already happening. A lot of what the extra mastery is going to do is just going to push more of this passive healing into overhealing. It's not like creating like new healing that I, I don't think it's very relevant personally because like it's really just pushing healing that already exists on you and is just going to exist on you regardless into being overhealing. So yeah. to me, it is very low value to like add mastery for that reason too. I think it's going to depend on, you know, how, how difficult the, the content is, is to you. Um, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like the, the reason why this has kind of, you know, blown up, if you will, in a DK community where a lot of people are very against the sentiment that you have is perhaps because the argument is stated as such that haste is better than mastery and when you think in, in the terms of haste is better than mastery then the argument is then the argument the perceived argument is that okay so if i want to be the best dk i can be and get the most healing i can and reduce all the stress from the healers then then haste is the best option which i don't personally think it is um, we don't really have the conclusive arguments or the conclusive data to to back up it one way or another. But I think if you want to go for complete defensiveness, uh, then you're still better off going mastery. Uh, that's just the 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 when I've been looking at the data, that's kind of the the route that I um, fall you know fall down. That that's a better giving you a better overall healing and defensiveness. But there is absolutely zero need to go that far deep into defensiveness and the trade-offs that you're making for that is is huge as we can see like by the breakdown you know the hardest hitting boss in the game 25 minute heroic rating you're barely taking any healing whatsoever uh, so why not convert some of that into a more useful stat that's still giving you some healing a pretty decent amount of healing as well because you do get a few extra death strikes every every fight which is a very valuable also smooths out the the damage intake a little bit um while also getting giving you huge gains in the offensive section uh, i think for some reasons we'll talk about a little bit later and some talent choices and whatnot um while also making your your class a hell of a lot more fun to play uh i think that's a that's a, a factor that people have been sleeping on just being able to spam your Definitely. buttons harder is a lot more fun than waiting for <laughs> waiting with empty globals <laughs> yeah the the just sitting around waiting for runes to come up play cell man I, yep. there's no chance i could ever play an unhasted dk ever again it's just <laughs> it is not it but it ain't it, 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 ain't it. So moving the haste conversation from the defensive uh, uh, perspective, why is haste such a good stat offensively, other than just giving you more spells per per minute? Um, I, I I know that there is quite a, some some quite nice interactions uh, with with haste and some of our 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 talent trees and enchants stuff like that, but uh, but how, what's a uh, where do you come down on on the the value of of haste offensively? Yeah, so uh, to me, after like hit cap and expertise soft cap, I mm -hmm. it seems to perform the best for just pure damage uh, after those points. Um, I mean, you get faster uh, white attacks, and we have what three different proc talents um, between like crimson scourge uh bcb and uh bloodworms so you're getting those extra procs uh with scent of blood you're getting more melee hits off that give you scent of blood give you 10 runic power that then turn into rune strikes that then turn into death strikes so there, there's just this whole chain of events that just always everything leads to death strikes basically yep. um yeah, I, I think those are the main things. Is there anything else you were thinking of? 
Well, you know, obviously we, like you said, you, you get a lot of uh, value from the, from having more white attacks. Um, scent of blood is huge because especially if there are more, is there, if there's more than one target, then you're getting so much value from that and, uh, being able to, to offload those more quickly in order to refresh the buff, uh, is, is essential. You're, you're getting so much winning power. Um, Bloodworms is another one that people don't, th don't necessarily think about, but haste actually gives you more raid healing <laughs> because uh, bloodworms do a significant amount of, of, of raid healing and, and the damage uh, they do is actually not insignificant either. If you look at your damage breakdown from a um, from bloodworms, they're usually responsible for about 2% uh, of your overall damage, which is it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and um, blood cake blades uh bc bcb um is a lot stronger than people think and being able to amplify that damage with haste even more even better um another thing that people don't really mention talk about as well is that your raised dead scales extremely well with haste um and does a a lot more damage when you when you have have haste and um if we talk a little bit more about you know like parsing tips and stuff like that things you can do to squeeze out a little bit extra damage i got some i got some tech that has been cooked up for for your yeah, your uh your ghouls and your army and whatnot so maybe we'll get into that later absolutely <laughs> a little teaser something to dangle in front of the little carrot here so you, you keep watching <laughs> um and um, yes, so the, the ghoul scales very well with haste. And if a properly snapshotted ghoul can easily, easily be responsible for like 3 to 4% of your overall damage, which is enormous uh, if, you, if you can time it properly. Um, because I've been looking at some logs and people who just pop it willy nilly. It can be like sub 1% damage. So Yeah, my, I'm uh, looking at this random log here. I'm not sure when it's from. But one percent for my ghoul. One important thing, though, is to remove bloat when it comes to sounds. Like you know, it's not gonna do you any good to have a weak R that tells you everything. So you know, if you have like Foji or if you have a lot of the other uh, weak R packs, there'll usually be a lot of sound playing where it's like cutters incoming, ads, breath, <laughs> move. You know stuff like wait, that. Wait, and, wait, and wait. Hold up. I'm gonna clip all that. I'm gonna add that to my uh, my week or pack, <laughs> the Riani <laughs> voice pack. You should. You should. Uh, I can. You can. I can uh, commission some uh, <laughs> voiceovers. <laughs> that, that's your um, next line of work. Uh, I, yeah, I think it would go. sell really well. I, I know I would <laughs> buy the pack for sure. Hey, you know I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, but the problem with those type of voiceover uh, things for everything is that be they become white noise. You don't pay attention to it after you've heard it a thousand times, uh, which is why it's, it's the same thing with the DBM, you know, like the pop, like, uh, bling, you know, that's, it's time for something to happen. That doesn't mean anything. It's just sound mm -hmm. right now. Uh, might as it's might as well be music, but it's real terrible music. So having things that stand out and that actually mean something to you that's the thing that's actually valuable just having something that's uh, having a sound that plays or uh having um voiceover mods for everything it's not gonna do anything so if you're a tank and you have those type of things then go in and remove the inconsequential sound effects like you don't need to know about cutters if you are main tanking sinestra you don't need to know about, um, well, basically any mechanic, really, unless it's something that is, uh, is just focused on you as a tank um, to reduce some, some of that clutter. Talk about the a comment that we had here. If using two out of three in Blood Cake Blade is better than the 2% strength buff from the Abomination's Might, yes, absolutely. On a single target, especially... It performs a lot better, uh, but of course, make sure that you have someone else in the raid to bring the the attack power buff. But usually, you'll have a paladin uh, bringing mites or um, something along those lines. Yeah, 
Yep. Yep. Is this, is this the uh, irresponsible build we're, uh, we're recommending to everybody here? Well, if you want to be irresponsible, <laughs> then you're, you're also dropping, uh, you're dropping three points on Blade Barrier. Um, oh, yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Butchery, so you're, yeah. You're, you're picking up two points in Butchery. Um, and then, of course, you're dropping um, two points in Scarlet Fever um, to pick up. Um, I haven't done The Sims on this because it's not, it's never really going to be a, a, <laughs> something that I do, yeah. but uh, I'm not sure if using two out of two in Abomination's Might is better or worse than um, the points in Virulence. Um, How about this? We get both. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I think we have it. I think we have the, it. The fully responsible build. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, is it if we can drop uh, Will of the uh, Will of the Necropolis and uh, Rune Tap oh, as well for something else okay. offensive? Yeah, uh, let's see. Get rid of one Rune or one Will. I mean, maybe there put that point really, into, like, uh, into the blood, blood boil. I think. Yeah, just like one more blood boil. Yeah, I think um, that's about all you can do. Right now, I've just been basically doing what you described. Uh, you know, army horn, but uh, I haven't been doing the back turn thing, so I'm, maybe I'll do that. Uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, it, it, it just <laughs> kind of like I mean, it guarantees that you, uh, you know, you get your vengeance cap instead of it just being RNG. So, yeah, unless uh, the boss misses, but you know, low, low miss chance. True. <laughs> yeah, w like uh, less than one in twenty. So. Uh, you know make, make sure that you don't play night elf uh yeah yeah official riani recommendation do not be a <laughs> night elf uh bloody gay uh <laughs> uh so yeah and then uh then i'm doing uh dshs um uh, uh dancing rune weapon uh dshs uh empower DS, HS, DS. Mm. Um, and then, at that point, you are at 100, or yeah. you're at 130 running power. Yeah, yeah, you're you're yeah. capped at that point. So then at that yeah. point, what I've been doing is, I, I think at this point, you have like basically three seconds left on DRW, something like that. So mm. then I'm doing like Rune Strike, and then hopefully it's a rune refresh, you know, uh, mm. close to coin flip chance. You get the rune refresh combo yeah. blood tap with that to throw a death strike uh, yeah. with, as your like final dancing rune weapon ability. Or if you get unlucky, then just throw a hard strike uh, mm. to make sure you get some ability going out for that final one. And the, of course, when we talk about snapshotting, uh, the ghoul, it scales primarily of haste. That's the biggest amplifier for it. And then strength is the other amplifier, not attack power. So using cap, waiting to cap your vengeance for your pets doesn't do anything. Um, so it's you want to pay attention to your Fallen Crusader proc, and you want to pay attention to your, you know, obviously your trinkets and pot and stuff like that, um, and then you know attack speed modifiers with the bloodlust and whatnot. Um, but as we as we mentioned, that haste is the biggest amplifier for um, for your your pets. You're on like not your active pets, like if you're an unholy DK or whatever, but your your unused ones. Uh, brings us to the the secret tech, the uh, the uh, the pre pull tech. So um, this will depend a little bit on whether or not you're using a. If you're using a on, or two rather, if you're using two 
trinkets that are either activate trinkets, like how I have a, a one trinket that is um, a on use that I use my dancing room weapon, and then I have one one trinket that is a proc trinket uh, solace. Um, so that and so un unless you have two trinkets like that, like I do, um, then you can trinket swap before the fight. And there is one trinket in the game that has an insane amount of haste on use. And that is the Shard of Woe from Sinestra. That trinket has, I think it's 2,100 haste uh, on use. And uh, you can use that, pop army, swap back to your normal trinkets, and snapshot your, your army on pull that way. And it does... But this it's kind of quite a, quite a significant uh, damage boost. Damn. Okay, that's big tech. One little trick um, I don't think a lot of people know about is that you can uh, you can AMS the green buff from a Loriac. If someone wants to get the pushback and uh, you get a hundred percent damage increase taken, you can pop yeah. AMS and you don't get the buff. Ooh, that's um, a big one. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So if you're if you're normally using that window to pop, you know your defensive cooldowns and whatnot, got you covered. You can save those for for phase three if you want. That's big. Chimera. On. If if people aren't already doing the two tank, like you know solo, solo blood DK uh, outside of feud strat, then that's a that's a huge one. Um, basically allows you to solo tank the entire fight, and if you have a cat. You know, or, or I mean, a, a, a druid off tank. He could just stay in cat all all fight and come into bear form just for the feuds, and then go back to DPSing. Um, so the the way that's the safety mechanic works is that if you're above 10k HP, then you're basically immune to dying. But due to the whole double double attack uh, mechanic, then you need to be topped off so you can survive one attack um, and not get killed by the second second attack instantly. But the way that shields work is that you it basically calculates the shield first, and as long as you have a a shield that's higher than 10k, then you are immortal. You can't die. So as long as you're a DK uh, who has a blood shield up during the the double attack animation, once you once the boss gets up buff, you you can't die. It doesn't matter if you have a million uh, break stacks or if you have uh, you know zero uh, the outcome is the same time to make a little public service announcement again uh fallen crusader over uh stone skin gargoyle any day of the week for uh everyone i would say even All day, if you're every day. yeah even if you're progressing even if you're more casual I, fallen crusader is, is the way to go um and uh yeah uh, that's not that's not a dangerous reckless tip. That just it, it ends up being the pretty equivalent defensively, but you just get the damage for free. So first one was how do you use WoW Sims as a tank to determine best gear upgrades? Which number? Which item makes you do highest number? <laughs> exactly. Um, not really. I think it's difficult to use the use sims to to sim for defensiveness because there's so many variabilities to consider. Um, you can definitely sim two items and look at okay, is my chance of death going up by seven percent? My damage taken is being higher, and I'm not really getting any additional healing from from my my the changing in the gear probably that's not a that's not a very good sign um that being said if you're if you're swapping out some gear and it makes you take 200 less damage per second but gives you 200 more healing per second um then that becomes a little bit more difficult because then you have to account for okay what type of fight am i simming uh how how much of a issue is just 
physical damage mitigation on this fight. Like I can, I can take swings from Nefarian all day, um, but it's ultimately the magic damage that matters. So it doesn't really make a difference if I get some more more dodge and parry because that's in, inconsequential damage. Um, but then also, okay, how is the healing uh, received portion um, gained as well? Um, is that consequential at all? Or is it just extra overhealing? Or is it, um, you know, problems with the sim? Or <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. I think for defensiveness, I think a lot of, it's a lot of like intuitiveness and having knowledge about the fights uh, and what's, what's required defensively just gets you the, gets you the furthest, in my opinion. We went over so much more in those four hours, so if you want to check out the whole thing, head over to Subtle's YouTube channel to say hello, and make sure to subscribe while you're there. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.